everyone, so on previous vlogs, um, I put a little section in saying oh, what you would like to see uh, in the future vlogs and probably about 60% of people, 60% um, of people said they would like to see where the bikes are built, the workshop and so on. So that is what's happening today. I'm currently just sat outside the, the gate or the entrance. Um, we'll actually probably... Uh, we're not on public road here again so for anyone so as you can see the race trailer sits right outside the workshop and then where Neil's van is currently sat in here this is the bike workshop and then all the rest of them buildings are all plant plant workshop so we'll actually have a look in the the truck as well not that there's anything terribly exciting in the truck because it's pretty much empty at this time of year but yeah we're gonna have a look in the workshop see what's getting built at the minute um and see how excited neil is which is not very excited because he's pretty grumpy i can't even edit that out on the video of neil's grumpiness so there's not much i can do about that but yeah we're gonna have a mooch in and um see what's happening Yeah, happy, yeah, happy Neil is to see the camera. Oh, Neil, we can't have any music on. Uh, I'll get, uh, I'll get done for copyright. 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 How do we turn it off? We'll just turn it down because the last video got, um, got blacked for copyright. Right, we'll start right at the actual door. Um, this is just some like a machining bench, so drills, all the sand and stuff, just to keep it near the door pretty much for the dirt. Like you can see on the floor, there's all the swarf and stuff. Some of this is just stuff that's out of the truck. So this is the bike rack and stuff that um, goes on the road, normally bike benches. Here you can see a uh, engine stand and then just cleaning products and stuff. What's under the cover now? So, here we have, is it mine or Damon's? So this is, this is actually my bike from last year that, well, never got any use at all really. It got three days at Porto Mayo. Yeah, so this, this bike was built at the start of last year. Um, and it has done three days of Porto Mayo. So it's pretty much just in, in super stock spec. You can see there's just black body work on at the minute but um oh no he's got it wrong it's demon's bike um but yeah so basically the only things you change from from being a uh, normal road bike to being a super stock bike so as you can see it's got body work on little tank cover screen uh front mud guard sometimes you don't even normally change from the road front mud guard as you can see the forks and the brakes just look the same as what what they would look on on the the road bike but there is actually an internal kit in the fork so K, obviously we run k-tech both on the roads and on on bsb so there's a k-tech internal internal kit in that and then the other thing you can see where the battery might be. yeah so the dash so basically the dash oh bright <laughs> the the dash loom all that stuff is different to what's on a road bike because basically when you cut off all the indicators all the crap you don't need um you're going to have a load of a load of bits left so wipe all that off so yeah starting from the front the fork internals the dash the loom um and then you can see now on the handlebars so you've got different brake levers um uh, this is your switch panel and another switch panel so one's for the dash and one's for more to do with your traction and, and so on like that this is actually my brake span adjuster. So if you can see when I'm moving it over there, it adjusts that out. So that's pretty much for, so when you're in the middle of the race and the brake fades a little bit, so because you never want to take your throttle or brake hand off on the left hand side, um, you can adjust that there a little bit and it just moves the lever back out. So then you've still got a bit more, a bit more bite to, to go at. Um, moving further back, so obviously the rear sets and stuff are, are different obviously everybody has different brands and stuff what they use and this is what this is what we we use and then obviously a full 
uh, Acapone exhaust system. This is still the standard subframe and stuff and the bodywork goes on back and then obviously a K-Tech K -Tech shock in the rear and then apart from that pretty much the tyres is the only thing different different on a than what you would get on a normal road bike. Um, so yeah that's that's one of the VMs. Um, we're going to turn turn the camera around now to the other side of the workshop and a little leaves and stuff just for making little brackets and stuff that maybe you don't have time to wait on coming and uh, we can just make them all here. Obviously Neil's a, Neil's a top um, lathe, lathe man. Um, getting in a bit further, this is our King Dick toolbox. We've got three of these, Neil, is that correct? Yeah, got three of these. So when, when we're at the roads, pretty much, because um, I'll be there and you'll have a super bike, super stock, super sport, and each group of lads that's on each bike has their own toolbox, and obviously you can see everything everything's fitted in it's all branded and stuff so then you, you're never you're never um going going without or you know if you know if something's missing out of the out of the toolbox um here we have a brand spanking new r6 that's just been built for next year um what's what's left to be done neil dash ecu and loop Everything. Yeah, so just just body work. A, su a super sport is pretty much the same as um, a super stock spec. Obviously, the engine's allowed to do a little bit more, but as far as the suspension goes, exhaust stuff like that there. But then obviously you run Motec on a six hundred that you don't run on a you don't run on a super super stock bike because um, obviously that was kit BMW stuff, and then this is a Motec ECU. But that's just because that's what the rules are in uh, British Super Sport so yeah that's why that has to get done like that and then this is then the other the other bike Aww. other R6 that was, was used for this whole the whole period of this season or the, the majority of it um, and just be getting a refresh and stuff at this time of year so all the bikes get stripped down after most meetings anyway so then in the winter time they get a proper a proper refresh so that the motors go back to we get our engines done at raffles so all the engines will go back there and stuff and um, you'll start the year normally with say one bike and three engines so then when you have one and one spare then the third engines then on the cycle of getting refreshed and stuff so it's not you're not um, you're never without at least one one good spare and all, all the engines are identical there's not like one good one and and two average they're all all built to the same spec and stuff so it's um yeah that's how it is and then that's obviously another one of the toolboxes just in storage and then we've got all rear sets and stuff this is actually a moto 3 bike we we run a kid in uh, the moto 3 class this year lucas it was his first ever year of racing so um yeah it's interesting i think mark that's been helping him that runs us on the roads normally he um he has run obviously a lot of really good moto 3 riders like eugene laverty and people in the past so it was good for him to give the give the young lad experience and then <laughs> there's actually something here that uh, you might recognize the, the name so this this was it's only been bought this week yeah go on friday yeah so it was purchased this what year did hickey ride it in 2015 do you reckon Nine, probably, yeah. we're saying 15 if uh, you if you know better you 15 you beat him so 14. 14 yeah so we're saying 2014 this is when Hickey, when he used to be fast, when Hickey used to be fast. <laughs> he rode this in bsb but um we literally just bought it last week and it's going to get turned into a kick car correct the ecu and the wiring harness, the ECU and the wiring harness. We, that, the, we already have another fire blade engine uh -huh. so the engine's not going to get used but the ecu so basically the same as what's in our super sport bikes the same motec Motec ECU and then the wiring harness and stuff and we already have a fire blade engine but as you can see it's the actual proper super bike, Golden's forks, Rembo brakes, everything. So um we're just gonna have a little look in the back of the truck now. It's probably a little bit of wind noise here. I haven't got the sock thing on the microphone but as I said there's not a lot in the truck the whole point of it um being parked this close to the, the workshop is, is well it's normally used as a bit of a are you all right yeah. it's normally used as a bit of a store 
at this time of year but we'll just get the lights on so this is basically the office part at the front of the, the front of the truck that shut this door over um yeah so pretty much when when i come in after a session the guys that if we're in a garage or an on and it'll always be either on the side or at the back of the truck and then me and roger will probably disappear in here sit on the laptop do all our debriefs and stuff um there's no actual living area in this in this truck because when we go anywhere the lads just stay in a hotel it's, it's too much to ask really for them to especially at the likes of the tt nobody wants to sleep in a bunk bed for for two weeks or just over two weeks of the, the year so yeah it's just pretty much an office we've got little cooking facilities and stuff but like I say we always have hospitality and stuff we've got a really good coffee machine that's um one of the most important bits and then i'll switch the light on here now so pretty much this is in through yeah so you just go in through a sliding door into the back one spare engine there is uh bmw engine so one spare bmw engine these are all um tire racks that the tire warmers sit on so if you can see all the gauges and everything so you can set I, ca I can't remember how many we have in total for when we're at the roads and stuff but we've got a lot so you can have all your separate wets dries intermediates whatever that may be all rolled out and the tire man will have them all all stickered up and stuff but um yeah so starting off here obviously these are all storage boxes and you can see everything's all labeled up and everything's in its in its right place obviously that's all just to speed up if you, if you are in a rush whenever you need to get stuff done at a certain time and um, that helps helps the situation but yeah so obviously more wheel racks this is my little helmet stand and stuff um chairs for the garage 10 seaters for the garage um some stuff in the flight case for the pits these are all wheels out of the 600 or the bmw um going back down yes yeah, so just all your tie straps another one of the king dick toolboxes that i showed you is inside this is part of an awning and these are more um built-in toolboxes that stay that stay in the truck and then at the back obviously there's just a fridge and then another storage section so when the bikes come in normally they just run up on these side runners um so you could put six eight ten bikes in easily enough but when when we do go to the road racing obviously the, the the lorry is packed so um you need every little bit of space every little bit of space that you can get but yeah that's just inside the truck it's nothing nothing too oh just got dark. nothing uh nothing crazy exciting but like i say everything has a place and a, and a purpose but i'll show you so pretty much that's everything inside and then you're probably always wondering all these belly lockers that go right along the side so i can't remember what's in full but a lot of the garage boarding um all the power washer equipment for stuff for the awning and pit boards all of that then goes inside the, the belly locker so when we pull up we can take all that out before we even have to open the truck and um, it just leaves a bit better if it's wet or anything like that there so it's not a, it's not as much uh, as much hassle <laughs> So this is basically the other side of the workshop that doesn't look anything like a bike workshop. All the plant stuff. That's where they do all the welding and stuff in there. And uh, this is sort of like the little... So, it gives you a full, full idea of uh, the size of the machine. It's just running in the wash bay before it goes into the, into the workshop. Yeah, so... Not just bikes, not just bikes in this workshop. Right, so this is this is probably the most impressive part of the workshop, to be honest. Um, these are basically a collection of bikes that, like I said, have been kept or mean something or are going to be raced as classic bikes, etc., etc. So um, the first one is my Super Sport Triumph. Um, this bike actually still has the lap record at the Ulster Grand Prix and possibly possibly also at the Northwest. Um but yeah definitely definitely still has the 
Super Sport lap record at the Ulster Grand Prix. So it's won the Ulster Grand Prix and the North West. Um, so obviously it's quite, it means quite a lot. So hence why that has been kept. This is my actual own 250. Um, something I built quite a few years ago. I've never actually raced it. I don't know if some people remember. I Before it was built like into this spec, I rode it at the Ulster Grand Prix and fell off it. Uh, after three laps of practice and broke my collarbone, which uh, did not go down very well, it caused quite a bit of upset. This is a factory RC45 for anybody that knows. Um, I rode this at Scarborough um, last year and um, in the classic race and stuff, but then obviously it became uneligible for the race, so they changed the rules slightly. But hopefully, going forward, this is going to be allowed to race around the TT, so that is the plan. The bike is ready to go, we've got new wheels and all sorts of stuff for it to make it a bit safer. But yeah, that's the, that's the plan. This is my 2015. Uh, BMW. Um, this bike has won the Northwest, won the Ulster Grand Prix. I think I got a lap record at both of them. Definitely at the Ulster. Uh, it was on the podium at the TT. It was my first and only big bike podium in the Superstock race of the TT. So, yeah, this this bike means a lot, a lot to me um, personally. And this is actually Gary Johnson's um, 2011 Supersport TT winning bike. Um, I wasn't even road racing at that point. You can see all the scrutiny and stickers and everything. Um, I was doing super sport for the team then, just in British Championship, not doing any road racing. That was my first time at the Northwest with the team and stuff. So, yeah, that's actually a, a TT winning bike as well. As this is my TT winning bike from 2019. You can see it still with the, the reef and everything on, as you can see. See in the camera, all the flies, everything are still on the still on the screen. So the, the bike is pretty much just as as it finished the finished the race. So yeah, that one means quite a lot to me personally, obviously, because it's my first and only TT win so far. And then this is a HP4 Carbon. There wasn't a lot of these made, so it's obviously quite a quite a special bike. And the reason it's in these Ashcroft colours is because, and you can see his number on the front. It's because um, Gaz rode this bike at Macau um, last year, year before last, so that's the way it's it's been left. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the whole the whole team workshop. I hope you've enjoyed this video.